short 15 20 minutes at most sure. relax don't don't be too tense <laughs> don't be too tense i got the comfy chair <laughs> so um what's your last name uh last name is donov 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 i'm gonna botch that up. it's okay okay so i'm just gonna be like alex and give me your last name <laughs> <laughs> that's fine okay enough. and in five four Hey everybody, welcome to Biz Talk, the show. We are, we made it to this episode, whatever number this one is, and I am with Alex. Zdanov. <laughs> Clearly I will butcher that. Um, <laughs> and Alex is one of, how many owners here? Uh, five. five. Five owners all together. Mm -hmm. um, and this is 3BR Distillery in Keyport. Now, I guess it's been about maybe a year, year and a half or so, I think I've been around this place. Yeah, in and yeah. Out, right? So yeah, we've, we've known you for about that long. Yeah, yeah so it's um, what I, I, and I want to talk about the business a little bit, but I just wanted to say, like, you guys have exponential growth in a small time frame. Yes, and yes. I think that's what people are really curious about, like, how do businesses suddenly grow without, mm -hmm. without doing that overscale where they crumble? Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely will come to that. <laughs> but um, tell us a little bit about... Um, 3BR and then swing us into how five people got together to make sure, it happen. Sure. So uh, 3BR Distillery is uh, it's a craft distillery that is based around a specific time period, the 1980s, where uh, there was a prohibition in the Soviet Union. Every single person was limited to two bottles a month. Uh, and so our name, Three Bottles or Riot, shortens to 3BR Distillery. Uh, but more specifically, we're based around a person, uh, that person being my grandfather. Um, and during that time period, he just loved entertaining people. He was like the people's guy. Like this, we're talking about the guy who uh, got recruited by the government after building a bunch of uh, contraptions like phone taps and uh, radios uh, to work for the government, even though he didn't even have a middle school or high school education. Oh, wow. uh, he just loved tinkering and all of that. And you know, to tell you a little bit more about him, he would get dropped off in the middle of like of the Soviet, uh, like like the Siberian like woods, like oh for fun, uh, just to get <laughs> uh, make his way back. And he would, you know, make his own maps because he didn't trust the maps that the Soviet Union made. Uh, but this guy, who's you know certified genius, he basically loved having people over his house and uh, entertaining and all of that. And when this prohibition started, it made it very difficult because alcohol was uh, rationed, you know, every two right. bottles, you know, maximum a month. So he started home distilling. And so this very, you know, accomplished person right in the middle of Moscow was, uh, was making alcohol from the only thing that he had, which was peas. Okay. Um, because, I mean, this is the Soviet Union. People know, you know, a little bit about it. The fact that, you know, food wasn't always exactly, you know, easy to get. Uh, so it's not like you go to Costco and buy, you know, 200 pounds of, you know, sugar or something like that yeah. so uh even even sugar was uh, limited at that time so peas happened to be the one thing that was always around uh peas are shelf stable they're easy to grow they're a rotation crop which you know uh is another additional point that i'll touch on later but uh they're you know not just needed to grow for the rotation uh aspect as it adds nitrogen to the soil um, but they're easy and cheap to grow and very nutritious. So the government always had them available. Right. And so my grandfather was like, everybody get as much as you can. And then he was using uh, the peas uh, to make the alcohol. Um, so basically he was the bootlegger of his day. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Right, right in the middle of Bath Moscow. Bathtub gin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was illegal what he was doing. Yeah, it was ab absolutely, absolutely illegal. illegal, yeah. We, um, keep on, keep on, <laughs> uh, watch us. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was very, very legal. Uh, he did have a lot of friends. 
um, that were like KGB and everything that, you know, would come to him for alcohol. So I don't think anyone was going to turn him in, but, you know, he, uh, he, he was definitely, you know, he would have been in a lot of trouble um, yeah. if, if it came to, you know, the certain people's yeah, knowledge. friends in high places. Yeah. I mean, connections, <laughs> even if you're in a bootlegging industry, but clearly it sounds like he was entrepreneurial just yeah. even before he was making yeah. booze. Um, and I assume that he was making vodka. It was all vodka, right? Or was, so it, was he actually going on to experiment with other... So the thing is um, that a lot of people don't realize vodka is actually very difficult to make. Okay. Um, so it, like our, we have a vodka still here um, and you know, it goes all the way to our 15 uh, foot ceilings. Okay. Um, like, a, a, like the actual column, like the things that people think like look like flutes. Um, the reason why you need that is because in order to make a vodka legally, it needs to be distilled to 95% ABV. Um, I say, it, tell it, people what APV is. It, alcohol by volume. Okay. So a typical vodka is 40%. So this is more than twice the strength. That's what you need to, to distill it to in order to legally call it uh, like a neutral spirit that then you dilute down to 40%. That would be your vodka. So it is very difficult and very like um, very specific and very like mechanical like to get to that high high place. Most moonshiners can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so what some th my grandfather's more so making was one of our other products, which is like this moonshine uh, based uh, recipe. That's what he was making. And he was uh, even aging it a little bit like he was coloring it uh, with uh, St. John's wort, which is really interesting because that's uh, good for depression. So yeah. you're adding, you're <laughs> <laughs> you're adding uh, vodka and uh, oh, well, the, the spirit and uh, St. John's wort. And that's what all the people were drinking uh, nice. made from peace. But um, that's that's what he was making i here i make a vodka as well from peas um and that's just also purely because that's what people come to expect of a distillery especially based around the soviet union i was like i need to have a vodka not just that have the best vodka and so our vodka actually won uh, vodka of the year internationally at the largest uh trade uh conference in the entire world congrats. for bartenders yeah congrats thank you so you said that, you know that you're you're in here distilling now you mm -hmm. have um the recipes that come from the family recipes and you yeah. make your own recipes but i know you have a brother too that's uh, obviously so we got to keep it in the family here yeah, yeah um you know so how does uh, how did you like was it you and your brother did were you talking about it or sure. did you just wake up one day and be like dude we're doing this yeah so so i mean this is something that you know for for you know legal purposes uh, it is uh, federally legal to home distill um, so we're not going to touch too much on, on, on that part of it, but uh, basically uh, once my brother and I found out that we had this family history um, and we had this recipe, uh, we basically were like, you know, this is an amazing thing we should do at some point to honor our grandfather. We never actually, like we met him when we were born, because uh, we were born over in Moscow, but um, our, the, my father, mother, and um, his, his uh, wife, grandmother, we all moved to the United States. He had to stay there because job his job was there and uh, right. like you know and so he basically um never got to meet him uh just heard all these stories and i really really just wanted to honor him um he was my mom's favorite person my mom uh like based his entire person of who she is on what her um, what my grandfather taught her and was with her and you know she and my mom is an amazing person too uh, because of that and even hi mom <laughs> <laughs> he uh he had just such an effect on everybody and so um my brother and i we were like we're gonna you know honor him at some point we're going to uh create this distillery do this thing that you know when we started googling it no one is doing using peas to make alcohol um and uh but the plan was years years later we were like you know what we're broke college kids you know we uh we had so much student debt uh still have so much student debt and we are, you know, just uh, finishing up our degrees, our respective degrees. He was in business and finance, so he was thinking like he was going to be investment banking or, you know, some kind of uh, uh, high paying finance job. He's like, I'll work for a little bit. We'll have some money and then we'll open the place, which is the logical thing to do. Um, I was finishing up my master's and I was going to start my Ph.D. in forensic psychology. Um, and then basically, wow. uh, you know, the world, you know, took a turn. I had this major accident. I broke my leg in just like the worst possible way. And, you know, there was complication after complication. I basically, 
I had an external fixator. I ended up getting a bone infection, um, which ended me having pick line twice. I was in and out of the hospital, you know, practically Damn. monthly. I knew all the nurses, uh, <laughs> and you know, and basically, uh, it, this was a time period where I was trying to uh, pursue my PhD next. I was trying to do all this stuff, and I just had no stability. I could not apply for any programs. I couldn't do anything because I just didn't know what my day-to-day -day would be. Right. Um, and so my brother and I, you know, he took the first job he can get out of college because he was supporting the both of us. And uh, we were like, he had, he ended up having a lot of downtime because he, he, he was just so good at his job, he automated everything. And then he just started automating everyone else's jobs. And then he was just basically uh, like a growing star in, in this, you know, company that he took the job as just like a, a throwaway. He's like, I need to take this just to help pay. And you know, he started growing. He taught himself the computer programming in order to, you know, write all of these programs. He oh, replaced wow. million dollar programs that the company was using. And uh, in that, all that downtime, he was like, let's work on this business plan. Let's get this started. Let's, uh, you know, get going. And um, so the two of us and uh, we, we were like, well, you know, I'm good at the distilling part. My brother's good at the finance part. Um, there, it takes a lot of people to run a company. I mean, yeah. Uh, and so, so that's where the other three founders come in. Uh, my brother and I, we were like, let's basically, uh, like, we know so many people. We kind of have like the superpower for networking, where we just meet people, and then we're like, oh, um, like this would be really, uh, like, this is a really cool person. I want to get to know like what they can do and all that stuff. And at that moment, I didn't even think of it as networking. I just like, was growing my friend group. Right. Um, and these are like the closest people to me now. And at the moment, we were like. Look, like you're an amazing marketer, or Yulia, she was working, um, f uh, doing an amazing job. At, um, in first, it, in um, I don't want to, you know, touch on exactly what she was doing, but she right. was running their marketing program, and then she was also, um, then she moved on to a head shop and was running um, uh, their marketing program for, you know, marijuana. And I was like, alcohol, you know, marijuana. <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're practically there. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so she, uh, we brought her on. Um, as a partner, and uh, William, who's uh, one of our other partners, he's most of the guy you communicate with. Yeah, usually with. I'm coming, yeah. He, he's, uh, he's like amazing at what it does too. He basically is uh, an efficiency engineer. Uh, well, that's like the, the, the term that I say, but apparently it's a um, continuous improvement uh, uh, engineer, I think is like the, the actual uh, title. I, I would call that make shit happen guy. Yeah, make shit happen guy. He basically has this knack for looking at any process and being like, this is inefficient, there's waste, um, you know, and, and so I, just talking to him and learning from him too, because I just love absorbing all this stuff. I, I learned now, you know, waste isn't what I thought. It's not just, you know, uh, throwaway product, like product that you throw away because right. you didn't use it or whatever. That, that's one definition of waste. There's also waste in terms of, um, you know, uh, an investment that isn't, you know, right at the moment, that's waste because you get all this money and then you're sitting on it, you have excess money. That doesn't come to your mind as waste, but that's waste, right? Because that money could be doing something else, else yeah. something else. Um, you know, uh, employees, having extra employees on during like a shift, that's waste because you're, you're wasting the money paying them. Um, all these different things. Uh, every single process that could be run with two people, but because something is inefficient about it, is run with four people is waste and you know everything about that and he's you know he's certified in like several things in that um, but he also just has the knack for it so he's constantly looking and improving it we are like our bar program is like unlike any other places like we um, other bartenders come here and they're like you do it like this like and it's because he never really worked at a bar he just looked at it and was like this is inefficient. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. And and you know not having that you know uh, conceited you know notions of like this is how I was taught at the bar before me. So we're gonna do it this way. Uh, every single process basically analyzed and and knew. Um, that 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 was amazing from from that perspective. And so um, Will is crucial for that. Uh, one of my other partners I haven't mentioned is uh, Rob. Yeah. He, he's a he's actually a PhD plant geneticist uh, at Rutgers. Um, very weird, you know, the, how does that tie to alcohol? Um, originally, the idea, um, you know, he, he's actually like, oh, like one of our closest friends in college. 
he has like an amazing palate for flavor as was, well. Yeah. And so he's running our, our bar program. He like it is like he's doing this crazy like over the, the head, you know, science during the day and then literally comes home, you know, after a shift here at 2 a.m. and then continues to bartend with his girlfriend for like two hours because he's just experimenting with flavors. Like, yeah, he's 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 crazy and, and it's amazing. Like and that's why our, our, our drink program is so, so amazing. It is. Um, it is. You do. You have really one of a kind drinks here. Mm -hmm. You're not finding them anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I've actually been here watching. As a matter of fact, we did uh, when we did the film. Yeah. Right, we, we did the film opening, we shot here, we did the film opening, we worked with you guys to create our own drink for, mm -hmm. you know, the film that, um, the short film we shot, and it was, we were watching everybody work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And here's the flavor, and here's the smoke, and here's this, and here's mm -hmm. that, and I'm like, I want leather. Yeah, and yeah. like, somebody <laughs> and, knew and how we, to and give we accomplished it, it, yeah. and accomplished it, it was amazing. Yeah. And, and uh, so, um, that's, that's, you know, where he's, he's now, this is, and that'll, that'll never stop. He, he loves it way too much, but you know, uh, what, where he really will help us out even further. Um, I mentioned it before about peas uh, being, you know, a rotation crop and necessary. Uh, peas actually happen to be carbon negative. Um, a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, because of that, the fact that they return nitrogen to the soil, um, they're considered good for the environment. They actually have, a, a, you know, a negative um, impact, like by growing them, by, uh, by using them. Um, and so we um, are currently looking into certification um, and probably in the next few months we'll have it. Um, we've already opened the dialogue uh, of uh, carbon neutrality or carbon negative, um, especially for our vodka and for our aged products. But uh, ideally we want the whole entire place to be, um, you know, a carbon neutral as possible. I, I mean, I, res uh, I mean, it, it's not even about the tax breaks. It's about, it's about just, you know, the world is burning around us, you know, so we, we can either do nothing or we can each kind of try to have our own impact. Um, and, and I think you um, also, don't you recycle a, a certain degree of your water here? You yeah, build, yeah. You build your own system or something. Exactly. Like that, right? so, so that's what I was getting at too. So, um, you know, I'm recycling our water system. Um, so typically a distilling process can, you know, be anywhere from like seven to 14 hours of just distilling. You're constantly using water to cool down the process because that's what distilling is. You're heating up a liquid, having it evaporate, you know, in layman's terms, and then you're condensing it back down to a liquid because the stuff that evaporates off first tends to be higher in alcohol um, because the alcohol has a lower, a lower boiling point than water. And so the, the distilling process, just, you know, is just evaporation condensation. Uh, for 14 hours running water at, you know, 60 gallons per minute, um, that is just, you know, not just money down the drain because, you know, that's all that water wasted. It's also, you know, water is a precious commodity nowadays. Like, I mean, it's, uh, if you look at, you know, the Western United States, I mean, it, it's horrible. Like, I mean, there's, they're, they're having people ration water and only take like, you know, like 10 minute shower, like whatever, uh, five minute showers or, and they can't use a certain amount of water. The farms are all fighting for it. I mean, we're a little luckier on the East Coast. It hasn't come to that yet, but I mean, water is still a precious commodity. And so I save more than half a million gallons of water just by doing it the way I am. And that's with our current usage, right? Uh, as we get busier, that's going to be even more and more in right. savings. And the system that I designed is, you know, recycling that water, uh, keeping it all clean. And that same water is the same water that I used to start my next batch with. And I can utilize the fact that the system is, you know, taking that cold water and turning it hot through the, through the, you know, um, uh, the fact that it's it's condensing right. it down, like you know, it's c going cold water in, hot water out. I can u then use that same hot water to start my next batch because I need hot water for it. And so the system yeah. is is extremely efficient. Um, there's improvements I can make because I mean I didn't know um, everything that would be to it. So it's a continuing improving process. Again, you know where Will comes in. Um, so let me ask you about the improving process mm -hmm. because a couple of things I noted that you had said. Um, while we were talking here, it was, a lot of this is about the future for you. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, you're in the present. You've built a business in the present. Sure. You've been here for what, two years now, a little over? Uh, a little over two and a half years. Okay, yeah, yeah. and you have scaled up pretty fast as far yep. as your distribution is concerned, mm -hmm. um, getting the product into um, wine and spirit stores, uh, yep. getting it into other uh, restaurants and bars and mm -hmm. things. You're moving pretty steadily. Yeah. Um, and you're doing all this stuff in here to improve, improve, improve. Mm -hmm. So what's that scale up look like for you guys? Um, 
because that's one of the, the things that I think stops small businesses is they get to this place where they're comfortable with what they've built so far, mm -hmm. but they're a little nervous to take that step because they don't want to fall and not get back up, you know, because there are stories. Mark is always telling me the story about this guy who, you know, got a bid to build like big, you know, move, earth moving machines and it came too fast yep. and it almost crushed them. So like, what does that future look like and how do you do sure. that? So, um, so we had, so with all the time I had with my brother, when we were really planning out this place before we really started, um, the one thing that I just heard stories about was um, the exact opposite, right? There is obviously, yeah, there's the waste of having large equipment, not having it uh, being used. Um, but there's also the exact opposite too. If you start very small, especially in a business like this, um, you have the risk of basically completely capping yourself out and then basically just running on the wheel and trying to keep up with demand and not being able to grow. So um, until you get in uh, new equipment that, you know, that takes, you know, six months, um, you know, at the, at the earliest, like the, the lead times on these things are, is crazy. And all that time, like, you're, you're killing yourself just trying to keep up. Um, so starting really, really small, especially in a field like this, where it's really hard to upgrade is, is something that, you know, I was recommended by everyone. Don't do that. Um, what I kind of, you know, my brother, uh, and I, and will, we sat together and we basically talked about the exact sizing for the equipment that will not only fit in here, but also is something that we can grow into, uh, while still, you know, being big enough that will have the benefits, you know, uh, we can uh, place larger orders down on you know a pallet of you know this or a pallet of that versus you know something really really small so in terms of our our you know growth here um we are just like starting to get to you know um like not even 50 percent of what we can out of here um but it like everything was calculated out that like it still was all like uh made way more sense than you know getting six uh like a six month lead time to to upgrade um, so we're gonna um yeah. we're like 20 minutes into this conversation. oh sorry sorry no 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 that's okay <laughs> i mean we want to give you yeah, guys yeah. the floor um so but what i do want to and and we'll definitely one of the things we're going to do too is like progress we're going to come back and sure. interview people for progress yeah, yeah you know at some point see where you are from the last time we had a conversation that's hopefully our goal mm -hmm. uh with our with our business um but what's a piece of advice like i think sure whether somebody in this business and i think maybe you could focus on somebody in the spirits in the distilling in the mm -hmm. brewery business um just a, one a bunch of questions one question how did you and your brother decide at the time that you're bringing in these other three individuals to make them partners versus Oh, you know what? Then let's go to that. That's, let's line that's, up that yeah. question. That's a great question. So how did you decide on these partners? And we'll try to keep it brief because sure. we only got a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but out of all the people you know, like what, how did you Yeah. Them? So, so um, yeah, there's always the question, is someone um, a better employee or a better partner? Um, you know, we, we went into this uh, and I mean, it all comes from like your, your original, you know, place as well i mean none of us had any money right we were all um we didn't come from a lot of wealth um this was going to be our baby we were going to basically kill ourselves in order to get it launched and in order to maintain it until it starts basically paying us off um and so when we were looking for 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 partners we were looking for people who were as you know as crazy inspired to make this yeah. happen right uh people that brought like like just a crazy amount of skill and and um you know a talent in their particular field right uh i mean we have every we have marketing finance uh you know someone that helps tie science. everyone increase everything right <laughs> yeah, everything. science you know every every single aspect we were like these are the things that we need to figure out because for all of us, it was more than a full-time job because we were not only doing those roles, but then we were also making cocktails and working in here uh, that night. So, uh, you know, it came out of a place of necessity, you know, in order to, you know, have us all be partners rather than employees. Because, I mean, paying someone of the caliber of Yulia uh, for our marketing, you know, would have been crazy draining on us. Right. Uh, you know, paying, uh, paying like uh, someone to be running our bar program, crazy expensive but also, you know, the expertise well, that comes invested. with everything. 
they're they're all invested. invested yeah. Sweat equity is more than anything is 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 so valuable. And you know, the, uh, together the five of us, we basically we built out uh, and and made like our baby. Uh, and we're all just so like happy with the growth. And it's amazing. And and it's it's not maybe not something you would have gotten out of an employee. No. You know you Agreed. you. you you need you need you need like that uh you like need that, that yeah. passion behind you and that's um with that um would love for you to interview you again because we like this story we want to hear more yeah uh but this is alex at 3br distillery in keyport new jersey you're going to see the products in the store if you don't already you'll find them at other bars we're going to see if we can get you guys hooked up with us down at the golden nugget this year I'll, we'll, we'll see what that'd be amazing there. yeah <laughs> well uh you know this way i could always have free drinks here um <laughs> <laughs> But again, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it.